If you're like me, you're probably spending a lot more time in your house or apartment these days. And while it can be great spending time with your loved ones and family members, ideally playing games together and having some fun interaction, Often you need to get away from those loved ones or family members and just have some quiet time to yourself. So while I normally cover games in these video overviews, I thought I'd start looking at some logic puzzles as well. Logic puzzles and games are very similar to one another in that a designer creates some sort of artificial world with rules and restrictions and ways that dictate how you interact with that created world. Now, of course, in a game, you are competing against other people to be the first to some goal or capture the most points or whatever it is, or be the last one who is still in the game. Whereas a logic puzzle has some setup, a goal in mind, you just have to do that goal and you win. And if you have the same setup, you can do the same thing repeatedly and win, which is primarily how puzzles differ from games. With a game, there's gonna be some sort of variability in the setup, or the, what the players do, or some sort of random thing as you play out the game, whereas a puzzle is the same thing over and over again. There's lots of similarities in how they work, but they differ in how they, they carry out as you actually do them, which is why we normally don't focus on logic puzzles on Board Game Geek, but I have some extra time. I thought you might have some extra time, so, I'll do some videos on logic puzzles just to give you another option for what you can do while you're at home. I thought I'd start looking at Lunar Lockout, which is a very unassuming board. Not much to look at here, but number one, it's still in print, so you can get it if you are interested in the overview here. Number two, I think it's one of the best logic puzzles that I've ever known. I first got it in 2000. We had an exchange student from France named Nicolas who just played it or solved it over and over and over and over again. It was just, he was enamored with it. He just fell in love and that was great because he was otherwise very bored in the US. So it was fabulous that we had something for him to do and keep him busy. Great, thank you. Thank you, Lunar Lockout. It was wonderful. So the game was originally released by Binary Arts as Lunar Lockout. They then repackaged it as Pete's Pike, with a mountain climbing theme instead of an outer space setting. And now it's back on the market as Lunar Landing, now from Think Fun, which is the game, the publisher name that Binary Arts adopted, I don't know, 10 years ago. This puzzle has been out for a long time, 20 years at the time of this recording. So simple and yet so good. Let's look at it. Here are the components in Lunar Lockout, AKA Lunar Landing. You have you, the astronaut out in space in this little space pod Xanadu. Although you might call yourself Dave. I've been watching 2001 again and then the making of 2001 and all sorts of other things. You are stuck out in space and you must return to your spacecraft by landing on this, this door on your spaceship. Now imagine in Lunar Landing, they have changed this, so this is the landing pod that you must land on in order to successfully reach the moon. But I prefer the original sort of 2001 idea where you are Dave, floating, lost out in space, and you must get back to the ship in order to disassemble HAL and preserve your life. But how do you do that? You're out in space and once you start moving, you just continue moving until of course you wander off into space and you're lost forever. However, you have five helper bots and if you hit a helper bot or a helper bot moves and hits you or another bot, then they stop. So of course, if I have a helper bot here and I am here, I move, I hit the bot and I'm done. I am home again, wonderful, that's great. But what if I am in a different location, perhaps here, well, now I can move and hit this bot, move and hit this bot, and once again, I am home. Things don't always work out exactly as you want, so you might have other sorts of challenges. Uh, okay, that's the same. But if we have something like this, here's a setup. How are you going to get home? You have to land your robot here, but you have to start seeing how you can use those bots to your advantage. So I can move down here. I can't move again because I would fly off in the space. You cannot move someone if they would fly off in the space. But I can move this robot here, being stopped by this one, and now I can go here and here. Done. 
So Lunar Lockout, aka Landing, comes with 40 challenge cards. The original concept for the game comes from Hiroshi Yamamoto, and then it was refined by Nob Yoshikahara, and then a whole bunch of people worked together to make puzzles for this, which is often how things work with the binary arts, think fun puzzles, where someone has a concept and someone else will then refine those puzzles. So you start with something extremely basic, where you set up everything as depicted on the card, and then go. Now, of course, Initially, it seems very easy as long as you have someone next to this entryway on the spaceship, can you figure out how to get there? And in this case, I move here, 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 done. I use everyone on the grid. In general, if there is a helper bot on the grid, you are going to use it in some manner. The challenge is just figuring out how to do it. And on the back of each card, it has an explanation for how you solve it in case things are unclear. The X is you in the space pod Xanadu, and you go up, left, down, and then left. Do that, and you get home again. Uh, if you jump ahead a little, let's see, we got the challenge here. I often do these enough that I memorize them, and then I forget them, and I have to memorize them again. Now, the problem here, there's no one next to the entryway. How can you get back home if there's no one there. How are you going to do this? And the challenge then becomes figuring out how you can maneuver things around in order to get home, which I don't recall this one. So you figure out initially, well, what can I do first? If I move the orange one, the orange one flies off in the space. So clearly that doesn't do anything. Or if I move the green one here, how does that help me? That does nothing. Possibly, hmm, I have to get someone here or here. I can move a purple one and then down here, but I can't get the red one coming in at this angle. So how do I do that? Hmm. Maybe you will see this before I do. Here, 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 here. Nope. <gasps> Already I'm stumped again on the level 10. I looked at a later one as I was preparing for this video and just said, oh yeah, I remember how to do that one. But this one, how do I get this one? The challenge is if you bring the red one over here, goes off in the space, goes in the space, and I can't put anything here. I can put someone here, but that doesn't necessarily help because then the yellow one goes off, orange one goes off, and these can't move without going anywhere. So that does not work. How can I do this, people? Tell me how. Open the pod bay doors, how? Help me. This is the challenge. This is what you must figure out. This is your first task, which you can do at home, just drawing on paper. You have little pieces of paper and you try to figure out what you're going to move and where things are going. Because you can go here, here, bring the red one here, but now you're stuck. Can't go anywhere without dying. And that's often the cool thing where you can set up a puzzle and use someone initially. Let's see if I can find the one that I was looking at before. I think it was this one. Where you can use someone and then use them again in a different way or move them from a certain point. So the challenge is, of course, get this here. If I move the red one up here, the green one blocks it, but now I can move the green one again to do something else. Mm. There's another way. So if I move the orange one here and then the purple here, 
purple here to stop here and now I get this in. Everyone is essential in order to solve this problem. Everything is there. And then you jump up to the super hard ones. And initially you're just, I don't know, you train to get there and yet sometimes you still fail when you're going and looking at a level 10 puzzle. That is the challenge. So why is Lunar Landing great? Why is it stuck in my head for 20 years? And the main example that I think of when someone talks about logic puzzles and I want to introduce them to what puzzles are. In one way, it's great because of the way that lots of logic puzzles are great, where you have some simple concept, you start with easy puzzles, you see how something works, and you learn a skill a very limited skill in a very particular environment, of course, that you can then apply to later puzzles is one of the reasons I enjoy mathematics because mathematics gives you certain skills and then you use those skills to build up to more complicated tasks. It is a challenging world where it mirrors the way that life works in that you learn some simple thing and then you apply that to something else. You learn a skill and you can do that skill over and over again because now you have mastered it, but also you can combine it with other things and solve more complicated challenges. So Lunar Lockout works specifically because it has a very basic restriction and you have to sort of absorb that restriction and think about it every time you're approaching a puzzle. The restriction being, once you move, you keep moving until you hit something. Now, of course, puzzles have to have some type of restriction because otherwise it's not much of a challenge in the same way that games give you restrictions where you need certain amount of money or you have only a number of actions or whatever it is, you have restrictions built into it and that's what makes something a game or a puzzle is that you have to navigate through those challenges. So lunar landing, lunar lockout has a restriction. Once you move, you keep moving until you hit something. So when you're presented with an initial puzzle, you can often look at things and say, okay, that guy's useless, that guy's useless right now. Right now, useless. Because of course, to solve the puzzle, you're going to have a series of steps. So what is the first step? And you can eliminate certain things, figure out possible steps, and then that will create some other opportunity from there for what you are trying to do. And in a certain way, you can step through the puzzle with every single piece on it and say, okay, nope, 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 nope. Okay, these are the three possibilities. And then what goes on from there? And you can solve it in a very rigorous structural way where you go through every possible step you know, that's solving that tree. You've got some sort of tree for possible movements. So you think of chess, you've got some sort of decision tree for what are possible moves you can make. And in chess, of course, that tree just branches out super quickly because you've got the 16 pawn moves and the four knight openings. But then on the next turn, you have lots more. And then you keep having more and more until pieces start being removed and things disappear. Most logic puzzles have a lot more streamlined focus on what you can do. And this works beautifully with that setup where at most you have six pieces on the board. You can often eliminate a couple of things, but as the puzzles get more challenging in the later moves, usually you have more possible opening moves because they have to present that to you to present some bigger hurdles for you to go over. But you can often move something and then sort of lop off a branch and say, no, I don't think that's going to be productive at all. And then you go out a different way in a different way and figure out how things work. And eventually, if you just run through every single possibility, you're probably going to get it. But sometimes you, there's this possibility you don't even see because of course, as you start to move, once you move a bot, now you have different things that are available. It can't, it, it can now move this way where before it couldn't. And the you, Dave, out in space could not use that bot to bounce off to head back to the Endeavor. But you, you, you just see it as you start to move things and it opens up and you have these aha moments that feel really good. And that's great. Then you're done with that puzzle. And then you're on to the next one. 
and eventually you get through all 40 of the puzzles and then you put it away for a couple of years and you forget most of them and now you get to discover it again. It's a fantastic thing, especially as you're getting older and your memory is getting terrible and you can go back to all those things that you loved before and now you can do them again, discover them over again. So there's an overview of Lunar Landing which is available in many different forms and eBay or Amazon or whatever in older versions and new. It's a fantastic challenge. You're probably not gonna be on an airplane anytime soon to solve it on the tray on the back of someone else's seat, but you'll be at home. You'll have some time to yourself. Try it out, see what you think.